looking at this, um, it looks like there might be an area of scar where like a biopsy might have been done. Very like good. The, um, Epi is a little face, um, and then there's like the area of scar underneath it. Yeah, from low power you can see normal epidermis, normal epidermis, but in the middle it's abnormal, right? It's kind of sunken and depressed in this case. The reedy ridge pattern is altered. In some areas, it's totally flat and, and atrophic with no reedy. Other areas, it's kind of a little thickened. So it's a little epidermal hyperplasia, reactive change from regrowth. And the dermal collagen, even from low power, it's actually better to see from low power. Normal dermal collagen, and then suddenly it's altered and looks different. And then back to normal over here. So yeah, that's a biopsy site uh, change. We can see it in three areas. We'll come and zoom in over here. We'll probably see so so this is scar from a biopsy and then we get a little bonus finding here okay what's going on here tell me about these these cells here um oh there we go i can see it now <laughs> um so these cells they're picking up aluminum chloride very good yeah so this is aluminum chloride or you know I guess one of the brand names is Drysol that uh, is used by dermatologists particularly, but sometimes by other doctors after doing biopsies, particularly after a shave biopsy, then they put aluminum chloride on top of the, the bleeding um, uh, a shave, a, a a shave site, the wound to stop the bleeding. So kind of a chemical cautery. And then what we get microscopically is a variety of changes. In addition to the scar, you will see histiocytes here of Variable amounts it varies from case to case. I think it depends maybe on how much dry sol is used, maybe the anatomic site, and also maybe how long after the biopsy um, we see the excision specimen. So this must have been like a cancer, and then they went back and re-excised it, and now we're seeing the whole biopsy site plus the adjacent normal skin. And so in this case, uh, I, uh, unfortunately, this is the best scan that we've got, but you get these histiocytes with increased granular bluish-gray kind of stippled, speckled um, cytoplasm. So you can see these kind of like dots here in the middle, and then this grayish blue cytoplasm and th that's on these histiocytes. So these are histiocytes that have phagocytosed the aluminum chloride um, and eaten it up. And some people say that these little speckles in the histiocytes could resemble like leishmaniasis or histoplasmosis, uh, which are also intracytoplasmic uh, um, organisms that live in histiocytes. So I've heard people say that, that um, you know, if you're having a bad day, you might mistake these little histiocytes for, for having organisms inside them when, in fact, this is just aluminum chloride. I don't even mention this in the report. So this is mainly just an incidental curiosity that if you, if you look at this and start wondering, oh, could it be, you know, uh, a parasite or a fungal organism? No, it's not. It's just aluminum chloride. So it, it is important every once in a while because sometimes you'll get an excision and you've not been given any clinical history um, and uh, no one's told you that the reason they're excising this is because a previous biopsy had been performed and the diagnosis was melanoma or something else. They just may say lesion and, and excise it. Um, you know, my dermatology colleagues, of course, always give me good history, but, but occasionally some other colleagues um, just send me a, a, an ellipse of skin with no history. Um, uh, which is always kind of, you know, sad to me, but, but, uh, I can usually figure it out because if I find a couple of these histiocytes, then I know someone has done a biopsy and put aluminum chloride on it. And then that prompts me to go investigate and figure out why is this, this excision being done. So this can be really helpful to tell you, yes, there's a history of biopsy here. Also, it can be helpful if someone's excising and occasionally sometimes a biopsy site can heal so well that it's hard to see clinically where the biopsy was done, especially if a patient has a lot of scars on their skin, you may wonder which one was the recent biopsy. And this is a great, uh, yet another great reason why we should always take clinical photographs uh, before biopsies. It's a great idea to do uh, because there's many times that that photograph can be enormously helpful and potentially um, uh, increases patient safety and avoids legal issues. So I highly recommend all people doing skin biopsies, please take a picture beforehand. I have seen so many times where that saved the day um, uh, plenty of times it's not needed, but when it's needed, it can be a really big help. But in cases like that, sometimes finding the aluminum chloride can help me determine, yes, we do have the biopsy site here. So these are the histiocytes. I have a longer video of this with much better example um, on my uh, Kiko uh, page and my YouTube. You can see down below, I'll put a link in there. And um, there you go. So that's aluminum chloride. And then the other thing is that sometimes, uh, is there a better area of it here? Oh yeah, right here. But 
I don't know if it'll come into focus anytime in the next 10 minutes. We'll see. Sometimes also the collagen fibers seem to get kind of burned and calcified uh, from aluminum chloride. This doesn't always happen. Again, I don't know why some cases show really robust aluminum chloride uh, change and some do not. But in any case, it, it is sometimes seen and so I want you to be aware of it. Uh, but what happens is you get these kind of distorted, discolored, calci uh, calcified um, collagen fibers. So the collagen gets kind of squished, smushy, um, uh, homogenized and smudgy looking and turns like kind of a darker reddish color and or purple color. So like all of these like weird looking fragments here are all fragments of kind of like chemically burned and calcified um, uh, 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 collagen fibers from the aluminum chloride. You can see they're kind of starting to turn purple in here. Here's some fragments of kind of calcification. All of this spectrum of things that we're seeing here is related to aluminum chloride. And despite this, it doesn't seem to cause any problem on the skin surface. I, I seems like aluminum chloride uh, works really well and doesn't produce discoloration of the skin, whereas some other agents that I've seen other doctors use like silver nitrate or uh, older agents like Moncel solution can sometimes leave discoloration of the skin surface. So I'm not sure why people still use those, but I do see some other colleagues and other specialists sometimes use those instead of aluminum chloride. No one pays me to promote aluminum chloride. I, I have no idea. I, I've never used any of these things, but uh, uh, except I do use aluminum chloride actually when you're shaving. If you cut yourself, you can buy a little stick. It's called a styptic pencil. It's a kind of an old timey thing, uh, but it's a stick of aluminum chloride and it works really well. It stings and hurts, but it works really well to stop bleeding. Uh, instead of putting a little bit of you know tissue paper on your face. So again, uh, I'm not paid by big aluminum chloride. If there is such a thing, um, please seek me out and send me a check. I'd love to get one. But in any case, just so you know, that's the only uh, association I have with aluminum chloride is I've tried it for shaving. And if you never have, go try it. It's like $2 for a little bit of this. You can buy it on, on Amazon or somewhere. So there you go.